the broadband spectral energy distribution analysis tool developed by the Virtual Astronomical Observatory. With IRIS, you can build, view, edit, and fit SEDs in an interactive desktop application. You can access these analysis tools through the icons on the IRIS desktop. For example, the SED viewer, the science tools, and the fitting tool. In IRIS, SEDs are made up of segments, which are groups of photometric points loaded from local files, URLs, built-in data retrieval services, and other virtual observatory tools. So for example, we'll start a new SED and start building it. We'll load a file from our local disk, and we have to select the file format. In this case, it's a VO table. Note that IRIS also accepts FITS and other ASCII-like files. So now we see once our file is loaded, these data points are added to the viewer. Over here in TopCat, a virtual observatory tool, we have loaded WISE data for this SED. So we can broadcast this data over into IRIS and import it. So in this case, we have to add the points individually. So we have to provide the x-axis and the y-axis information. In the x-axis, we can choose photometry filter. And from this list of photometric filters, we can find the y's data and use the effective wavelength for the x-axis. Underneath the y-axis, we fill in the information about the units and then map the columns to the values. We continue this process for the rest of the WISE data points. And then when we're done, we can click Import Catalog to SED to add the SEDs, to add the points to the SED. Over here, we've already added the WISE data from TopCat, and over here is our data from file. But now let's say we want to see some more data about these points, say data from the NED database. So in IRIS, we have a built-in portal to the database called the NetSED service, which allows you to type in a target name, and the NetSED service will return a list of the photometric values, photometric points associated to that SED. So now we can see that the NED data has been added to the SED from the viewer and in the SED builder window. So now let's take a look at the SED viewer. So in this window, we can change our units between flux and flux density, and IRIS provides a list of commonly used units. So for example, we can plot Jansky Hertz. And we can switch back and forth between flux and flux density. Also through here, we can open up a table browser that provides detailed information about the photometric points in the plot. So you can see some metadata about these points, data about the segments that the data points are from, and the meat of the data, the spectral and the flux data. The table and the plot can talk to each other. So you can click on points on the plot window, and they'll be highlighted in the table for further inspection. You can also zoom in on points on the plot and select these from the plot and highlight the same roles. Here in this field, you can type in a Python expression and select the points that match the condition. With these highlighted points, we can extract the data into a new SED. So now let's take a look at some of the science tools. In the science tools, we can easily redshift a SED to whatever redshift we'd like, in this case, Respiram. You can interpolate the SED as well with whatever options you would like. You see that the said viewer also updates. Over in the next tab, we can calculate the flux through user-defined passbands or through one of the th over a thousand photometric filters provided by the Spanish Virtual Observatory. So in this case, we can grab all the iris bands and add them to our list. Now let's take a look at the fitting options that are provided with iris. 
and we'll start off with our filtered rest frame SED of this Blazar. So you open up the fitting tool, which shows us all the components that are preloaded in and a model expression field with which we fit our SED with. So for example, if we had three components in here, we could arbitrarily combine them together. For example, component one plus component two times component three. By default, Iris loads in a power law. But in this case, since we're dealing with a Blazar, uh, we're going to get rid of this and we're going to add a logarithmic parabola to model the radio synchrotron emission at the lower energies. So we click on add and see that Iris comes with a preset list of models. Now these are the same models that you will find in Sherpa, which is Iris's fitting engine. So we look through the list and we can find log parabola. And double clicking on the component, we can edit the initial parameter values and freeze or uh, fix the values for the fit. So you can go ahead and define the data range over which to fit this logarithmic parabola and click fit. And so here we provide our optimization methods, we'll stick with Neldermead, and our fit statistic. And let's change to chi-squared. So once the fit is done, we can see that this red line is now fit to our data over the blue range. And that our parameter values have updated as well as our statistics. You can also calculate the confidence limits on the parameter values in this window. And so when it is done, we can grab the upper and the lower limits on all the free parameters. And if we wish, we can save the results to file for us to look at later, or we can save them in another format so that you can reread them into IRIS and fit them to other SEDs. IRIS is built on an extendable architecture, and so it allows users to easily add their own functionalities as plugins. So users can also import their own custom models and template libraries through the Custom Models Manager. So, for example, we're going to take a look at adding our own Python functions or models to the SED. So over here, we have a modified black body that we wish to add to Iris. So these functions take two parameters. The first is a list of the parameters, and the second is the spectral axes in angstroms. So here we have four parameters, the reference wavelength, amplitude, temperature, and dust emissivity, beta. And the return value is a function of x. And so over in iris, all we do is provide a component ID, or just the name, how you want it to appear in iris, provide the list to the, provide the file uh, path towards the file we wish to load in, and then provide over here the function name, which has to match the same function name in the py file, the names of the parameters as they'll appear in iris, the initial values, the minimum and maximums allowed, and whether or not you want to keep them fixed or not in the fit. And you can install the model component. And just for an example, we have here a group of star forming galaxies that are round redshift 1 fit with two of our user models, two of these modified black bodies. And so this ends our demonstration of IRIS. For further information, you can go to cxc.cfa.harvard.edu slash IRIS.